Logan here, or The Gaming Pastor, and I'm extremely excited about this video uh, because this is my first content, real content video uh, for YouTube. Uh, I've just been doing some gameplay stuff in the recent past, and I'm gonna continue doing that because it's fun for me, but I wanna talk more about different video games. I love video games, and I love talking about video games. And so there's gonna be a lot of new stuff here, uh, and I'm gonna start things off with talking about the top 10 zombie video games of all time. Dying Light 2 is right around the corner, and I cannot wait to play that game. I'm very excited about it. I know many other gamers are, and I know me and all other gamers love to just mow down thousands of brainless bone biters. You can't get enough of it, neither can I. I am not one of those that's part of zombie zombie fatigue. Give me all the zombie games. I love them. So I'm going to start things off at number 10 with zombie. Z-O-M-B-I, no E, which is surely the most uh, creative zombie video game title that you've ever heard. Uh, it's also the probably the most obscure game that's going to be on this list. Uh, this originally came out on the Wii U back in 2012 and eventually uh, came to other consoles. And this one's gameplay is a little slow, a little janky, uh, and the graphics are limited uh, because of what it came out on. But the central idea behind this game really makes for a unique experience. You play as a random survivor in the middle of a zombie outbreak in London and you're tasked with objectives to figure out how to get out and survive. The catch here, though, is that if you die, you, your character dies permanently, and your survivor becomes one of the infected in the world. Uh, you then revive as a new survivor back in the starting safe house of the game, and your previous now shambling undead psycho uh, is dead and walking around himself, and you, are, are your new survivor, is tasked with going back and trying to gather the supplies that you lost. And so it creates this really interesting uh, gameplay loop. Uh, it's a pure zombie survival experience. And you really feel it in this game. The zombies are no joke. The squishy off switch atop these zombie shoulders is not nearly as squishy as other zombie games. Um, and if you're against two or three zombies, it can really be uh, a dangerous thing. Um, and so, especially if you get in a group of them, um, it's just bye-bye survivor, game over. Um, the fact that death actually matters in this game it was, is what makes it so uh, really interesting and appealing. Um, and the fact that it's actually difficult uh, to survive through this game, and it's scary too, the tension is crazy. So zombie is a little rough around the edges um, and is it, it isn't always actually that fun uh, to play. It's a different kind of fun. It's a stressful, tense, nail-biting, sometimes frustrating kind of fun. And if that's what you're looking for, you filthy masochist, then this game might be for you. Coming in at number nine, we have World War Z. This game is basically a Left 4 Dead clone, uh, but it differentiates itself enough to still make it a must play for any zombie enthusiast. Uh, you can play solo or with three others uh, in your group. Like I said, while this game is very much a Left 4 Dead-like in that you and three other survivors take on hordes of rotting rioters, uh, the highlight of this one is the zombie hordes themselves. The hordes that come sprinting at you like a literal tsunami of zombies is absolutely terrifying and also an absolute blast. They climb over one another, they scratch and claw and scream, they, they fall all over each other like a freshly blossomed high school flame. It is fantastic. It's truly a spectacle to behold. And while it's not as polished or as addictive as Left 4 Dead, it's still a lot of good fun. If you're looking for a frantic and fast-paced zombie experience to play with friends, then this game's probably for you. Next up, at number eight, we've got the Dead Rising series. And Dead Rising is just one goofy son of a gun. It's like the class clown that never takes anything seriously, and mostly everyone loves them for it. I enjoy these games because they are mindless. Even more so than other zombie games, Dead Rising it just wants you to sit back and enjoy some zombie killing nonsense in the most ridiculous ways possible. And even with the countdown timers in the first two games, uh, these games are really all about just killing thousands of horrifying husks in a myriad of different outfits with a myriad of increasingly ridiculous weapons that make absolutely no sense. Uh, somehow you can combine a long sword with a can of liquid nitrogen uh, and you get an ice sword that chops zombies up and freezes them uh, and it's awesome but it's also stupid uh, you see that desktop computer over there uh, magically combine it with your handy dandy axe and you've got an electric axe that calls down lightning like you are Thor the god of thunder himself uh, so it's it, it doesn't make a lot of sense but don't think about it just have fun that's what these games are for and if you want to just sit back eat some Cheetos 
and slaughter waves of wailing walkers while having a good laugh. Dead Rising is for you. And remember, folks, you can't spell slaughter without laughter. So it only makes sense. Even when in these games, it doesn't. In at number seven, Call of Duty Zombies. I remember the first time that I ever played the magical experience that is Call of Duty Zombies. It was a Friday evening in 2008. My best friend Tito and I were hanging out at my house after a long and grueling week of prison, also known as high school. And we had heard about this extra mode available in the, in the game uh, Call of Duty World at War once you beat it uh, called Nazi Zombies. And it sounded cool, so we tried it out. And by try it out, I mean we played it for the next eight hours straight until we ourselves were mindless meat sacks. Uh, the thrill of surviving as long as you can against endless waves of undead was unmatched. And the addiction of just one more round was something that our brains could simply not resist. Uh, we have plenty of, have had plenty of COD zombies over the years, uh, and everyone has their opinions on which version is the best. The correct opinion, by the way, is Black Ops, Kino, Der Toten, or Totten, however you pronounce that. But there is no denying the sheer amount of zombie killing fun that these games offer. And let's sound off in the comments on which one you think is the best zombie map of all time. Coming in at number six, we have State of Decay 2. I'm not sure why anyone would ever want to live through a zombie apocalypse, but if you love the never-ending threat of starvation, the fear of being eaten alive by feral flesh freaks and constant growing desperation, then State of Decay is your dream game. You live the lives of a group of survivors literally just trying to make it by in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, State of Decay 2 is a base builder, a survival scavenging simulator, uh, and there's little overarching story. The real stories here in this game are found in your individual survivors that you play as in your camp. Uh, in this game, you create your own stories every time you leave the warm, dilapidated confines of your camp. And out there in the world, anything can happen. For instance, my survivor, one of my favorites, uh, his name was Ty. He decides to go on a scavenging run for some much needed supplies and Ty was a martial arts instructor before the end of the world so he's really good at fighting off zombies. And with Ty, I, I get a little bit too confident and I try to take on a horde that ends up overwhelming me. Uh, I realize I've ventured too far from my vehicle so I don't have a quick escape. Uh, I try to throw a Molotov to thin the horde but that only works minimally so I pull out my AR-15 and start going to town. I make a pretty good dent in the horde, but unfortunately the noise of the gunfire brings a feral zombie that jumps on top of me and chomps at me like the absolute snack I am. After all the craziness, I come out alive, but now Ty has been bitten multiple times and is infected, and I've got about five minutes to get him home uh, before he becomes uh, one of the mangled meat munchers himself. You see, Ty happens to be my favorite uh, survivor that I have in my camp with his martial arts special attacks and his traits that give my whole camp a major morale boost. So I stumble back to my vehicle and haul it on home, clock ticking. I peel in and jump out of the truck when I get there with seconds to spare. And of course, my home base is being attacked by another shambling soiree. So I bust through the gate, fall into the infirmary with gunshots and screams and zombies all around, inject myself with the blood plague cure and switch to another survivor to take out the remaining zombies threatening the sanctity of our home. This is a real moment, a moment story of the ridiculousness that can happen in State of Decay, and it is absolutely thrilling. So get out there and live your best apocalypse life. At number five, we have Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'm gonna be completely honest here. The very first Resident Evil game I ever played was Resident Evil 6. I know, I know, The what's widely known as the worst one in the entire series. And funny enough, I actually enjoyed it. And so when Resident Evil 7 came out, uh, it was a completely different game. Uh, and that game actually is one of my favorite horror uh, video games I've ever played. Uh, and so when they made Resident Evil 2, I was all in on the Resident Evil series, even though I hadn't played any of the earlier ones, so I just tried, decided to try it out. Uh, what a treat it was. Quite simply, this is the best video game remake ever remade. Uh, I, I never played the original, but I watched a playthrough of the original before I played this one, and man, it is mind-blowing the leaks, the links that they went to uh, to make sure this remake was perfect, uh, and it's awesome. The graphics are incredible, the gameplay is smooth as butter, and the tension and scares never miss. Uh, if we could only get remakes with this kind of quality uh, for other old games, what a world it would be. 
Coming in hot at number four, we have Telltale's The Walking Dead, season one specifically, and this is where it's getting really hard for me to narrow it down here. This is kind of the the good stuff now with these zombie video games. Uh, not that the other games weren't good, but man, this is, in my opinion, the best of the best right here. Uh, if you're looking for a more decision-based and less shooty-shooty zombie experience, then look no further than Telltale's The Walking Dead. This point-and-click, choose-your-own-adventure is just far more enthralling than it has any right to be. Uh, you play as Lee Everett and as the zombie outbreak begins you stumble into the life of a young girl named Clementine and for the remainder of the adventure you become this father figure to Clem and Clem becomes a daughter to Lee. Uh, if you've never played this game before I highly recommend it uh, because what happens at the climax of this game and, and throughout there's so many choices to make throughout this game that are just uh, are, are crazy and um, they're just enthralling and uh, so many decisions that will literally make your jaw hit the floor and none more uh, than the very end. It is absolutely gut-wrenching, masterfully written and acted and directed. Uh, if you've played the game, you know exactly the ending that I'm talking about. And if you haven't, I would just say that it is literally the only game I've ever played that actually made me shed a tear, uh, a few tears. I, I wasn't weeping or anything because, you know, I'm a man, uh, but I shed a real tear, and, and I don't care who knows it because it is incredible stuff. Uh, go play it if you haven't. You won't regret it. Here we are, number three, the top three zombie video games, uh, in my opinion, of all time. And here we have Dying Light. It was a really hard decision whether I should put The Walking Dead here or Dying Light. I ended up going with Dying Light because while it doesn't have as many amazing story beats as The Walking Dead, uh, this game is just so much fun to play. I'll go ahead and say that this is the most pure fun I've ever had with a zombie video game, and it's the main reason I, I cannot wait for Dying Light 2. Uh, you play as Kyle Crane, who was sent by the government to check up on the city of Haran. The city has gone dark and shut itself off from the rest of the world, and you are tasked with finding out what happened. And of course, it's a bunch of decaying dead dudes that have taken over. The story is actually pretty decent and interesting enough, uh, but like I said, it's the gameplay that really keeps you coming back to this title. Uh, infused with wonderfully realized parkour traversal and perfectly weighty combat, uh, the game is never boring. Uh, Haran is an open world you can explore and there's so many things to see and do, uh, but all of it requires you to take out lots of brain dead bozos. You do that by jumping, climbing, drop kicking, shooting, stabbing, clubbing, exploding, grappling, the, the possibilities are seemingly endless in, in ways that you can dispatch the dreadful dead, all with extremely fun to use makeshift weapons and with the beautiful city as a bloody backdrop. What more could you want from a zombie experience? Well, here we are. We've made it to the top two zombie video games of all time. And before I reveal what those two games are, in my opinion, I, I want to say that Di uh, Days Gone is not going to be in there. All of you Days Gone fans, I'm sorry. I just haven't played the game and I didn't want to put anything on here yet uh, that I haven't played. Uh, and so forgive me for that. I know it's a great game. I've heard. I've just never gotten around uh, to playing Days Gone. So I will at some point in my life, I'm sure. Uh, but that game is not on this list. So please don't crucify me for not putting it on here. Uh, but the top two zombie video games of all time. In at number two, The Last of Us. Many will immediately call foul that this does not have the number one spot, and we'll get to that, but this could easily be at number one. Of course, it's one of the greatest video games ever made. It is an absolute masterpiece. The story is incredible. It's harrowing, it's gut-wrenching, thoughtful, nuanced, emotional, exciting, sad, heartwarming, and brutal, and many more things. The story of Joel and Ellie on their adventure together is masterfully crafted in pretty much every way. Uh, not only that, but the gameplay is fun, and the game is often itself terrible. Terrifying. Again, if you haven't played this, it's worth it for the story alone. Uh, in my humble opinion, this game has the most effective and genius ending of any game I have ever played. I swear to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. There's so much that leads up to that 
simple okay that makes it land like a ton of bricks in the best possible way. Uh, and while I think The Last of Us Part Two was also fantastic in its own right, uh, no, that is not the number one spot. Uh, I had to give number two to The Last of Us, and I have to give number one to Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, because uh, I feel like they're both just right there with each other. Uh, the reason I choose Left 4 Dead as the greatest zombie video game ever made is simply put, because it is. It's just a fact. Uh, while there's a little story to be had in these games, uh, this game simply captures the essence of everything we love about the grotesque gut gobblers. It's a testament to how good this game is, that even though it's been more than 10 years since the first game released, we still have game devs trying to emulate its brilliant and none have done so. World War Z, Aliens Fire Team Elite, Earthfall, Strange Brigade, The Anacrusis, Back for Blood, all those games borrow heavily from the main idea of taking a group of survivors and battling from checkpoint to checkpoint as waves of enemies try to kill you. There's games that are coming out in the near future that are basically left for dead that still probably won't capture the same magic. Rainbow Six Extraction, Evil Dead the Game, uh, GTFO, Redfall. It's incredible that game devs still see the undeniable appeal of Left 4 Dead and are still trying to make their games better. Uh, 10 plus years on and still no one has made a better Left 4 Dead like than Left 4 Dead itself. Uh, time will tell if a game will ever come along and dethrone the king, but there's just nothing quite like the way Left 4 Dead throws waves of zombies at you, and each time it's always different and always exhilarating. Everything is just so satisfying, especially when you're making your last stand with your best friends and you all have a sliver of health left and you hear, the chopper's here, let's go, as hundreds of sulking sour skins come sprinting at you. It's the little things in the way everything is designed in Left 4 Dead that makes it perfectly perfect. Uh, and this game is the ultimate zombie experience. So there you have it, the top 10 zombie games of all time. I hope you had as much fun as I had making this list. And before I go, I want to leave you with some encouragement. In the same way that these zombies can overwhelm us in video games, life can really be pretty overwhelming sometimes. When life gets overwhelming, I want you to take a step back and try to compartmentalize stuff in your life. What's essential? What's important? What's neither? If it's essential, do those things first. If it's important, don't put them off. Get to it. Work towards what you need to do. And if it's neither, actually say no to something. It's okay to do that. Let someone else take on a task for you. Ask for help. Taking care of yourself is so important. So don't think you have to do everything all the time on your own. Do what's necessary and give yourself some time and space to wind down. And remember, your job is not as important as your mental and physical health, and it's not as important as your family and friends. Work diligently at whatever it is that you do, but don't let the business of life overwhelm you. It's just not worth it. Your worth is not defined by what you do and how well you do it. Uh, there are more important things in life that define you. So put the focus on the things that matter the most, and always remember you are valuable, you have more worth than you know, and you are significant even when you feel like you're not. It's been fun, and I love you all. I'll see you later.